Hello and welcome to this virtual conversation with Arsenal in the community to celebrate Black History Month. Delighted to be joined by Joe Willett. Joe, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. We've got some young people, as you can see, from City of London Academy, Highgate Hill, who are also participants on our Premier League Kicks programme. And they've got some uh, very interesting questions for you later on about Black History Month. And I just want to start by asking you about your school days. Where, where do you go to school, Joe? Um, well, I went to a school in East London. Um, my primary school was called Wins, Wins Primary School. Um, and then when I grew up older, I went to a secondary school, secondary school in uh, like sort of Chinkford. Uh, it's called Hines Park. Um, okay. And do you remember back in school being taught much about Black history in school? Um, in secondary school, we done it in citizenship a bit, but. It wasn't really something that it was really installed in us, you know. It wasn't really a, a big subject for us. For that, for what I can remember, I, I'll never really look back at it and think, yeah, I actually learned it a lot, you know. Okay, we've got Armani here with our first question. Armani, do you want to ask your question now to Joe? Um, who was your inspiration growing up? Um, I would say my inspiration was probably my father. Um, He's a man that's always been so supportive of what I wanted to do. And yeah, he's probably my biggest inspiration. And on the pitch, it was probably Thierry. Um, everyone knows Thierry is such a, such a legend, you know. And then when I grew up, I, I got to know him like, personally. And it never changed, really. He's still my inspiration. So I say my dad and, and Thierry. And it's an interesting point about role models, isn't it? Because you see... For example, some of the abuse that someone like Alex Scott gets on social media when really not only is she very good at what she does, but she's also playing that role model role for thousands of young people herself. So yeah. having that visibility is so important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. To, to become such a, a great athlete like Alex Scott is and, and to become such a good presenter like she is as well and to be a role model for all the young black black women that out there, there's out there that's wanting to follow in her footsteps and um, it's such a hard thing to do you know so to, for her to do it so well and um, still get abused it just shows how much of a strong woman she is you know we've got a question now from priscilla priscilla what's your question would it be a difficult choice if you are pulled up by Montserrat before England? <laughs> um, to be fair, Montreal will always be in my heart, you know, to, to play for Montreal and, and represent the country that my family's from. But I'm, I was born in England and I'm, I was born, I'm a Britain, I'm British, so, you know, so, so it's always been a dream for me to represent England as well. So it's, it's, it, it will be a hard choice. Um, I know I was speaking to Bakaya when he got called up for England a few days ago and he was telling me yeah it's really hard for me and stuff but it's it it don't change the the fact that how much he loves um, Nigeria you know um that's like that would be like me the same that change the fact that I love my my country um and the people in the country so much but it's sort of it's sort of a, a choice between choosing it as like the platform you need and like your the love for your country you know I don't think it takes away anything from the love for your country. And you said you were born in, in England. Were your parents and grandparents born here as well, or were they in Montserrat? Yeah, my, my mum and dad were born here, but my grandparents were born in Montserrat. So, yeah. Have you been there? <laughs> well, I've been there when I was quite young, to be fair. And I remember I used to climb up the coconut trees and stuff. So I do have it still installed in me. And growing up, um, my family and a whole culture is at home is is that sort of a caribbean that montrat sort of theme you know that's the food we eat the, the way we speak that's that that's how it is but growing up in england and and my family my my mom and dad and my brothers were all been in england you know all our lives so it's sort of a hard one we've got sophie here now sophie what's your question for joe how does it feel to be in such a diverse squad at arsenal um, to have so many different players from different countries is is, is sort of a, a blessing for me anyway. Um, I feel like to to learn from 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 different players how their culture is from different backgrounds and different languages is sort of a sort of 
an eye opener, you know, because there's so many different ideas and so many different the way different the way people function because of their background, and it's something that you can just learn from, you know. So I'm really happy to have so many different countries and just have a diversity in, in the squad, you know. You, you mentioned about having different languages and cultures there. We've seen Mikel Arteta on the touchline coaching in lots of different languages, and I wonder how what that's like, what it does to the team dynamic, especially with things like. When a new player signs, sense of humour sometimes doesn't quite translate between languages. How, how, how does that influence the, the squad dynamic? Yeah, it, it, teaches, it teaches you a lot, you know, to actually relate to someone that can't even speak English. For me, anyway, I have to relate to people that don't really speak English and they have a totally different culture and a totally different way of learning background to me. And then you, you learn from them, they learn from you, you take a bit of their piece of them, they take a piece of you. And, it's sort of it's come together, you know, as a team, and I feel like that's that's the way it should be. And I feel like when I, in the future, when I grow up, I can always um, take these skills with me in, in everyday life. So, Val, what's your question for Joe? How can football celebrate Black History Month? Um, well, that's a good question. Personally, when I uh, saw that the they were, they were celebrating all the black players that have, have come and that are present now and, that, and that, that the future black players. I feel like that's a brilliant way to actually celebrate how much black people have done for the football, you know. Um, I feel like there's still a lot of things to do. Um, as you see, I feel like there should be more black coaches and black managers that actually... Um, that that would be a big recognition for for me anyway um because when i was growing up there was not a lot and there still isn't when i look around and is that somewhere i know it's very early in your career joe but is that something that in the future you might want to pursue being a coach or a manager yeah that's something i would love to do you know i love to speak to and, and help young children because when i was when i was growing up there was not really a lot of people that that sort of tried to help me in the right way so i would love to be that person that tries to help young 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 players that wanna wanna make a make a career for themselves, you know? And that's something I would love to do. So if I the if I'm blessed enough that for that to happen, I would love to do it, you know. Well Joe, thanks very much for joining us for um this conversation for Black History Month as Arsenal community. We will continue the conversation all year round. It's just a good time of year to really um, highlight the issue and thanks again for joining us and thank you to the young people for their questions.